Hey, you want to throw a frisbee on the quad? No. A pangram or a hollow alphabetic sentence is a sentence that contains every letter of the alphabet at least once. The most famous one that's been used as a resource to demonstrate this uh, for 200 years is the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy duck, but that one's just lame. A much cooler one that I've seen running around Twitter in the last couple years is this. Sphinx of black quartz, judge my vow. Which is objectively a way cooler phrase the best kind of cooler. Welcome to another edition of Because Science Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and then I judge them like an inscrutable sphinx, and then I tell you what's coming up next on this here, oh, ye olde channel. Hint, glowing birds? Two-headed deer? Big old mutant fish? <laughs> what's going on? <gasps> It's more serious than I'm making it sound. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we are trying to figure out, just like the great detective himself, what disease the Joker actually has. Looking to Batman canon across media, video games, movies, comic books, television, all that stuff, we came upon a diagnosis for the Joker. We said he kind of had a mad clown disease, a prion disease that could be transmissible to other people and give him those symptoms if it was mutated enough. You can watch the video for even more of that science you could but what did you have to say? Whew. Really on a roll. Our first comment comes from Logan Barry, who says, based on the many origins of the Joker, such as the one bad day origin where he falls into toxic chemicals while I was helping out a gang, what is the most likely origin slash method of contraction for Joker mental illness? Personally, based on the origin where he fell into toxic chemicals, I believe that the chemicals caused cellular damage, which had the additional side effect of warping some proteins in his body. Well, Logan, like we said in the video, we were only going off of the Arkham series of video games, but I see this as plausible because we actually don't know how prions become infectious. We have proteins, prion proteins, on the surfaces of our cells, on their membranes, and they sporadically, randomly, turn into the infectious kind of protein. We do not know exactly what causes it to happen, or it could just be truly random. So could there be some concoction of chemicals you could fall into that might trigger some sort of protein misfolding in the three-dimensionality? That's not a word. It is now. Sure. Why not? Our next comment comes from a lot of you, like F, King X, Oreo, Javid Campbell, who all say that my Alfred in the episode, my voice of Alfred, sounds like Peter Griffin. What? My impression of Alfred was a perfect Michael Caine, which I will demonstrate for you right now. Now, this is Peter Griffin's voice. <laughs> hey, Lois. Sure. Now, <laughs> why not? And this is a perfect Michael Caine. You see, you got to throw the voice in the back of the throat, and you got to apply all the years of brandy and the cigars, and you make it kind of breathy. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off. It's a perfect Michael Caine. Ryuman90 says, so I see this time, instead of teaching people how to defeat superheroes, Kyle decided to go into the law and give a chance for Joker to have a plea for insanity by mental disease in court so he would be put into Arkham Asylum instead of the high security prison because he knows that because of the lack of security, it is like a playground for villains so that they can conspire freely. I see what you are doing, Kyle. Why do you all think I'm a super, some kind of supervillain now? Just because, you know, I call in the occasional orbital strike on people. <laughs> I don't do that, I was just subscribed. P.S. I already changed my identity and my location. Okay. Okay, good thing Batman doesn't have anything that can find anyone. I'm telling you, I will find you and I'll blow the bloody doors down. And I'll hit you with a fist, the size, of a tangerine. He was throwing him into the river. It's a perfect impression. Ace Hollywood. Wow, that's a cool name. Ace Hollywood, detective with eyes. <laughs> Ace Hollywood says, hey Kyle, first time commenter. Is the Kyle computer a large server-based system with a standard CPU or is it a quantum computer? How do you get the heat away from the CPU and other components? Okay, so you're asking about the Kyle computer, so I can only answer this in my other perfect impression. <laughs> A Kyle computer is a liquid-cooled quantum computer, multi-qubit, and because of the superposition of, of quantum particles inside this computer, it can break any encryption on the planet end-to-end, -end, but Morgan Freeman doesn't like when I do that, so I don't mean... <laughs> 
But the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this episode, I got to give to Cameron Lightfoot, who says, hey Kyle, love the show. <laughs> You give me life. You give me life. <laughs> Love the show. With this revelation about Joker CJD, would that mean that his Joker toxin would be made up of ground up Joker brains? Now that sounds gross and weird on the face of it, but you're making an actually amazing point. If you remember when there was a big kerfuffle about <laughs> weird way to describe a catastrophe, a big kerfuffle about mad cow disease in Europe. It was spreading to a lot of their cattle. Why? Well, they determined kind of like the funerary cannibalism happening in Papua New Guinea with the Foray tribe, they were feeding dead and diseased cattle to the other cattle as food. They would grind up all of these dead cattle and insert it into the cattle feed as a way of kind of grossly recycling animal protein and material as food. They then gave that food to other cattle and they ingested the prions, which gave them the mad cow disease that their predecessors had. And that's how it spread throughout the population. So if Joker wanted to spread his Joker disease, if it was a prion disease throughout the population, yeah, I could see him forcing a doctor to uh, remove a little bit of his brain and then grind it up into some kind of joker juice that he distributed throughout Gotham. Ugh. Try the all new joker burger. Whether or not you actually knew that connection, Cameron, you made a fantastic point. And for that, you are indeed a super nerd. Ah! Oh, you're grabbing my body. But of course, I'm not always right. Sometimes, that's just the way it goes. <laughs> Is that Seth MacFarlane? So what did I get wrong last week? Our first correction comes from Joshua Clock, who says this is more directed at the game for calling it Joker-itis. Itis is a medical suffix meaning inflammation. Based on the description you gave for CJD, I think it would be more accurate to call it Joker lysis, as the lysis suffix means deterioration or destruction. Love the show, man. Ho ho, you're right. The Joker doesn't have inflammation of the Joker, and if he did, I don't want to see it. Good correction. PyroBob5 has a correction who says, the diagnosis might fit better if you factor in the fact that Joker might have a natural resistance to this kind of disease that others do not. I think you're right. I think our diagnosis could be improved if Joker had some natural immunity because then he could get around some of the more terrible symptoms that do affect people with CJD, like the terrible memory loss, the uh, terrible prognosis for how long you're gonna live after you're diagnosed with it, problems with walking, all this kind of stuff. So if, if Joker did have some kind of natural immunity, it would start to work better. Thinking back to the fact that uh, the Foray tribe in Papua New Guinea has now been shown to be evolving some kind of resistance to Kuru and with other terrible diseases, given enough time and enough uh, population interaction with those diseases, uh, there can be an evolution of resistance. We're finding HIV and AIDS resistance in some populations in Africa. So it's not unheard of that you could become immune to some kind of terrible symptom or disease. So I think you're spot on. Our next correction comes from One Winged Aaron, who says, Kyle, I'm disappointed in this video. Uh, you said Kyle computer instead of Kyle pewter. I mean, you were just talking about prions for crying out loud. What? You're not a fan of my Natalie Portman toes? Too bad. That was pretty good. James Neve says, wait, they are still eating each other in Papua New Guinea? No, so let me be more clear on this point. I said that there were recent cases of Kuru in Papua New Guinea in like 2005, and I said that the practice of funerary cannibalism had been banned like 50 years ago, so what is going on? Well, there's something sinister about Kuru, and this prion in particular that I did not mention. Kuru prions can make their way to a person's brain and then stay there dormant, not doing anything for literally decades. So you can be infected with Kuru and not know it for 20 years before developing symptoms. So that's why even after banning the practice that spread this disease, this terrible disease among the foray people, they can still get it many, many years later. Are there cases of cannibalism still happening? That's impossible to say for sure. We can't interview every single person and have just people watching everyone all the time, but you can still have cases because Kuru manifests itself in a kind of despicable way. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this video, I'm giving to Deke Lucero, or Lucero, who says, Kyle, great video as always, and then says a lot. They then go on to explain a concept of super sanity for the Joker, which many of you commented on. 
So this idea is that the Joker is perfectly sane. He just puts on these different kinds of psychoses. It's kind of like a mask or a cowl, if you will, to fool his opponents or to defeat other heroes by adopting a split personality disorder kind of performance when it's useful to him, being more psychopathic when it's useful to him. But in reality, he's totally fine and he's super sane. He's actually breaking the fourth wall. He knows he's a part of media and that's why you can't pin down his diagnosis across all forms. First of all, I don't really like the idea of super sanity because I think it's more of a crutch explanation than a real explanation. By that, I mean there's been so much Batman and Joker media over the years, and I think super sanity is just a way to explain away and reconcile many different conflicting stories about what actually happened to the Joker and bring it together in a cohesive way. To me, it's more interesting story-wise if he does have an actual origin and something's actually actually going wrong with him that we could diagnose. That's interesting to me. So I think that super sanity, while it might be an interesting explanation for how the Joker has many different uh, backstories, many different memories of his own backstories, I think it's an interesting explanation, but I don't think it's necessarily a good explanation for what's going on. For that, I defer to the science. But hey, for laying it all out very nicely, Deke, you are indeed a super nerd. <laughs> that was my perfect Joker laugh. Now, moving right along to this week's episode. This week's episode of Because Science is what happened to the wildlife in the Chernobyl exclusion zone? That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, we are returning to Chernobyl because so many of you found our previous episode so fascinating, and we are trying to figure out what actually happened to the plants and the animals in the immediate vicinity of the world's worst accidental nuclear meltdown. There is decades and decades worth of research and papers on this topic, and we're going through all of it to put together our best picture that I could at least do of what is going on inside this zone. Are there two-headed animals? Are things glowing? Or is wildlife actually doing amazing in there? You gotta, you, you, you'll have to watch. <laughs> it's complicated, it's interesting, stay tuned. So go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet all about what Joker disease might possibly be and leave me all of your best nerdiest comments, corrections, and questions at youtube.com slash because science, facebook.com slash because science, and at because science on Instagram and Twitter. I don't want to have to bury another comment thread. <coughs> Perfect. And don't forget, this sentence is also a pangram as x-rays quite wonderfully zap Kyle's bones verily. Go ahead. You can check it.